I think all of us have to be delighted to have with us Her Excellency Sheikha Lubna al Qasimi. Uh, she's all very well known to us, even though we don't see her very much in the country. Uh, we're very lucky that she's on a fleeting visit through the UAE. Um, I think you come here just to sort of get fresh pair of laundry and then go and visit another country again. Yeah, huh? yeah. my mom said I should get a visa next time or have a residence visa in the UAE. <laughs> So all of us, I mean, we're, we're very fortunate to have a Minister of Foreign Trade as, uh, as Her Excellency, and um, we have about 20, 20, 20, 25 minutes. We're going to have microphones also that are going to allow you to ask some questions. Um, I'm going to try and kick this off by, um, by maybe trying to provoke you a little bit, uh, my dear friend, which is... I want to say, Araf said we're going to be shot through that Karabish. No, if that... we go beyond 25 <laughs> minutes, they're going to have a gun shooting us. No, yeah. so. The, the gun is over there, but is Ralph, there? Okay. Ralph, you see Ralph, you see the guy waving his hand in the uh, back there? Okay. Yeah, he's the guy, he, with, the he's the guy with the gun. Okay. So, um, I'd like to ask you a first question, which is, it seems to me, you know, that this whole gathering, well, before we get that, what do you feel about all this? Well, I do believe this is the celebration of entrepreneurship. And if I want to say a word today, I want to say thank you, Abraj. Thank you, Ara, for doing the best job today. This is a contribution to the community, to the youth, to all of us. And we are indebted to have such a great celebration today. It is the best definition of what is taking place today. So I want an applaud for Abraj. Higher. Come on, energy, energy. <laughs> Yeah! Well done. Thank you. I did not ask her to say that. No, I just no. want to make that clear. <laughs> so, it's, you started off, you've been a techie, um, you've been an entrepreneur, um, you've started a business, a couple businesses actually, you, you even started a perfume range, uh, and then you end up, you know, you have a great career in business and then you end up in government. So what went wrong there? Because what this is all about is really to try and you know encourage people to do the exact opposite. Well, the only thing that went wrong is um, when you're a CEO of a company, you start being critical of the process, bureaucracy. And one day I found myself sitting in a conference thinking, oh my God, I'm a minister. I can't say these things anymore. I should be here supporting these things. <laughs> um, you know, it's quite strange think someone who comes from a, um, an engineering background, a technical background in science, uh, moving into an entrepreneurship or running an e-commerce platform. And in my belief, sometimes the technical person um, is not the right person for uh, an e-commerce platform as a CEO because you don't want to think technically, you want to think business-wise. And then government. Um, the moment, to me, the um, denominator amongst these three is one thing is the ability to understand a concept, being able to project it and to portray it, but be, being able to communicate it so you actually can go through a cycle of adoption, empowerment, and then delivery. So when you think about technology, technology at the end of the day is really about um, delivering a system that's going to uh, enhance or change or transform a business process. Now in order to do that, you as a technologist should not be the owner of the idea or the champion for it. The champion should be the business user who should take that on um, as a change or as a contribution to the business um, reaping results. Um, and the government, it's the same. It's no difference. It's the ability to communicate, the, the ability to understand and um, go through a, f a form of uh, reforms similar to what the technology would do. So to me, um, I feel it's really quite natural where some people may think of it differently. Now, earlier we heard, um, we heard uh, two entrepreneurs here on the stage saying to all of you entrepreneurs out here um, who are used to complaining, 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 this is an opportunity for you to stop and to actually try and change things. So what do you say from a government standpoint to the entrepreneurs, would-be entrepreneurs here, so that how will they be heard by the government? How do you want to be interacting with them as a government? First of all, I want to say something about all of us. As an individual, if, wake up in, if you wake up early morning and you look at yourself thinking it's going to be a bad day, it's going to be a bad day. So you decide and you define your fate every morning you get up. You can be there, you can be disciplined, you can um, uh, create your points. If it really starts as a bad day because you're concerned about something, most important part, you can always tell to yourself, I've had worse before. 
So you're going to get over it. So unless you have that attitude of positive um, energy to start with early morning, every day, looking at your business, looking at challenges, you will never make it. Um, the government looks at the um, uh, overall strategy of the economy in two parts. Government, government puts policy by listening to the business environment, seeing what actually can happen and change things. But the people who really make the economy are you. It really is the business. At the end of the day, the contribution, the growth of the GDP is all about the business people. So the engine itself is the business. Um, the policy making, the framework of how to do things, um, what to mitigate comes from the government. So do you think, I mean, maybe tough question, but um, is this region friendly towards entrepreneurship from what you've lived and what you see? Entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship for me started from childhood. I've seen it around me. I've seen it with my grandmother. I've seen it with a lot of women at home. So it is very natural. This is a merchant uh, mentality uh, and as environment. We are and we've always been on the trade Silk Road starting from East Africa all the way to India and China. So um, even I would say, even when UAE actually discovered and found oil, they said, okay, well, what can we do with this to make money and actually change the place? It's a business thinking. It is not a, uh, a, you know, a, a typical thought of uh, uh, oil production. But to me, it's, uh, uh, it's an environment where, uh, as Arif said it earlier, it's very natural for us. Uh, it is indigenous to this region because it is a region of a, of a pathway between the East and West. Today, we redefine everything but we maintain the same thing. We are uh, the cross path of the Silk Road, of the trade Silk Road. Um, the only difference today is the vehicle, the operation, modus operandi, everything changed. You've got shipping, you've got airlines, you've got cargo, you've got communication. The environment itself, the goods and services that are actually being transported, transported today are different as well. But the concept and the belief is, remains the same. You have a very nice scarf. Did you wake up this morning saying, I want to bring energy to this conference? Yes, I thought, well, I'm not going to put my black uh, cover this morning. I'll go with blue, but surprisingly, it is all blue. So uh, <laughs> I fit well today. Thank you. So tell us maybe about important mentors in your life. Have there, have there been, mm -hmm. Has there been one or more than one? Sometimes you go through a path, and today I say um, a lot of the, young, I mean, the generation today, the young people are actually lucky because they have access to mentorship. They have access to environment that actually um, help them move forward. When you are first technical engineer, computer science, graduating 1981, coming back, there are no um, reference. There's nothing out there. You start from fresh, but the only thing that remains very critically in your life is faith. You have to have faith in yourself. You have to have faith in your career. You have to have faith in what you believe in. It was a challenge to get into technical engineering, 1975, leaving to California to study, thinking if someone would say, well, that's a box, what are you gonna do with it? But I believe that that was actually what change, what's going to change the world, and it did. And it changed the, the world over and over. So the, the environment today is completely different. However, um, I personally believe that the uh, presence and the environment around your home actually plays an important role. To me, my parents had faith in my belief. They always said I was stubborn, and I did whatever I wanted at the end of the day, but stubbornness is what got me through. But at the end of the day, they respected my wish. They believed in it. We are nurtured with passion, with care, with confidence, with love from our parents, from our community. That's very important to us. So th to me, that was really the, par the path that got me forward. Um, I had great support when I was in California through my professors. Um, I get great support of my friends. My friends who I had in the 70s still remain the same. They're still great friends. I don't change. It's important to continue um, your connection with people. Um, one, of the, one of the greatest mentors I had is actually Dr. Farooq Al-Baz, who's in Boston. He's the director of remote sensing. He was a, an aspiring scientist and a geologist who was involved in Apollo 13 and 14 of um, landing on the moon. His job was basically to train and to um, um, help astronauts selecting and collecting the right rocks it's very good to go um, on the moon, but if you don't know what you're going to bring, uh, excess baggage is very critical when you come back on a spaceship. 
But um, whenever I did something, um, he was always there for me. It was like a, a, a lighting guide for me. But the, the most important part that he had that I learned a great deal was modesty. He was a great scientist. He was loved tremendously by people in the Middle East as well as in the U.S. And very well respect scientists. But modesty to him uh, meant reaching out to people, helping a lot of uh, students, inspiring a lot of geologists and other scientists. So that was important. The other lesson I learned from him was basically if my life didn't go very well, I used to complain, just like all of us do. And I'd say, well, I didn't get the right credit for this. And he'd say, you should not be saying this. You don't do this because you're waiting for credit. You do this because you believe in it. You believe in the contribution itself. So these two lessons remained with me throughout my life. So he was a, he was a great mentor for me um, as a scientist, but also as, a, as someone who believes in helping out the community and being part of it. Do, do you think you, I was listening to you to talk about this mentor of yours. Do you think, how does one find a mentor? I mean, how do you know when you found a mentor? Do you, do you actually seek a mentor or, do, or does it happen? Well, it's, it's quite an interesting question, Fred. There, there are two parts. We have seen programs developed, evolved around mentorship. I've seen it through universities. I've seen it through organizations. The, the challenging part is a, a, an entrepreneur or a business person or politician are busy people. So they're not there to give you time all the time. Seek out mentorship through uh, moments of your life through people. You can be talking to someone and inspire them with an idea. You can be there with someone else a question, you can answer, you can respond through email. You can be there in physical presence with them. But don't expect too much of a person because you're asking a lot. That person has quite a busy life. Um, to me, it's a belief of having several mentors in your life. Everyone will contribute differently. My culture is different than someone else. I can help with some ideas, I can share some of my problems to help think of a better way of doing things. But one person, it's not a, a you know, a, a lot of people think of it as a volunteer job, but it's not a job that you can take a person for several hours every day or even twice a week or once a month. You, you have to be flexible of, and um, to think of what you expect from people who are helping out with mentorship. In fact, I have a mentor. Um, we all should have a mentor. He's sitting in the room right here. And what I truly, truly loved about this mentor is that um, I asked him one day, do you want to be, can you be my mentor? And he did, never really answered, but he started doing it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 I've, and I'm eternally grateful for that. I think it's, you're right, it's something that can come from different people at different times, different directions in different ways. Um, but it's not a job. It's, it's, not, exactly. it's not a function, it's not a tool. Uh, I'm gonna, no, we're gonna get microphones out because I'd like some of you to ask mm -hmm. questions. We have a wonderful group of students also visiting from uh, Sheikh Zayed University and other places, so other academic institutions. I'd like to make sure you get a chance to ask some questions. So please think of a few questions as you're doing so, or comments, of course, uh, but as you're doing so, uh, some people in here, Sheikh Alubna, are maybe entrepreneurs, or maybe they think they're entrepreneurs and they're actually not entrepreneurs. Uh, what, according to you, is an entrepreneur? What's not an entrepreneur? Actually, that's a very crucial question. I want to share with you a couple of stories. And uh, if anything that makes me survive in life is humor. And if you're, the humor is on you, sometimes it's very, very healthy. Um, when I was working at Dubai Ports from 1993 to uh, 2000, one of the things that I would, I, um, I have high energy, so when, I'm, when I get my job into a maintained job, I get very restless. So I thought of a great thing to do. I actually started a flower shop, and I thought this was wonderful. All I thought about was the design of the place, the Vivaldi music, and I used to buy things and bring it to make the decoration right. But you know what the problem was? I was my best customer. I think I bought more flowers than anyone else. And this is the differentiation between a, a true entrepreneur and someone who likes an idea thinking that it's going to work. Liking is not enough. Um, I was in Bahrain um, a few years back and I met a couple of girls there. They're really nice. And I said, uh, do you have a business? And they said, yeah, you, you know Friends, the series. And I said, yeah. And they said, we've created this nice coffee shop. And this place is really for a lot of young yappy people to get together and we can drink coffee. And I said, that's great. So how does it work? She said, I get together with all my friends there. So there you go. My best customers are my friends. So the thing is, 
uh, entrepreneurship differs from anything else that you have to look at the bottom line. You have to find out if this business doesn't go through creating the right profit to revenue for you, then it's not a business. It is passion is an injection, a dose of vitamins that keep you going, resilience, risk taking. But you have to have someone else challenging the idea that you have. When I started up Tujari.com, which was actually the government of Dubai project, but my role as a CEO meant that I really have to create the idea, I have to create the adoption cycle, I have to make it work, I have to make it successful. Um, every six months or sometimes uh, every year, I would actually fly to San Jose, go to Silicon Valley, get a consulting company, ask them to come and check the company, check the, do a health check on it. I want to know that um, the company objectively works well, that the business model works well. Uh, the, the, the problem or the trap you can get yourself to that you believe in it so much that you become defensive. You have to have others looking at it. You have to listen to them. You have to um, uh, embrace criticism. When someone says something, they're, they, they're saying it to make sure that you actually do a better job. So criticism is actually healthy and it can contribute to the enhancement and improvement of your business. Questions? Do we have microphones? We don't have microphones, but okay. I can hand over my microphone. I can help. Boy, I'm scary. Maybe because I became a government official. Everybody's quiet. <laughs> no questions? Here we go. Ian Fair Service. Yeah, Ian. <laughs> Sheikh Lubner, it's great to have you here uh, celebrating entrepreneurship. How have you taken entrepreneurship into government? How can you make things happen in government because you are an entrepreneur, which we know you are? Two parts to this. If it comes to the job itself, my job and the government, the culture of the business is a great contributor to running a government office. Um, the environment of connectivity, um, using technology, communicating ideas, understanding what's out there, communicating with the, uh, what I call the stakeholders. At the end of the day, the clients of the government are the community, the business community. So connectivity is very, very important to us. The other side is uh, within my job as the Minister of Foreign Trade, we embarked on a great project of actually traveling with a lot of young SMEs from here. Um, I've taken um, two groups uh, in, you know, throughout the years uh, to China for the Canton Fair, which is a great place for a lot of young people to see and to look at products and think of new ideas uh, with this. I just got back from Armenia. I had about 50 people with me from the business community, some government as well. So the traveling with taking on a, uh, a business uh, community with you where you open doors, my role it really is to create a dialogue with the government, ease up the, uh, the uh, interaction, but really leave it for the business itself to find uh, opportunity and find partners in this. Um, the other side of the job too is actually listening to problems. Uh, there has been several incidents when I was in the Ministry of Economy as well as the Ministry of Foreign Trade whereby uh, companies have been slapped with uh, litigation regarding anti-dumping um, when it comes to um, selling abroad and part of this is protectionism from other countries. Part of it is too much competition. Um, prices are um, competitive with a lot of products in terms of quality and uh, uh, qualifications. Um, that's another part where we listen to the issues related to the private sector. We take on these uh, problems. We, we seek solutions through the government. And we try to help them to actually maintain a healthy um, dialogue within their businesses and increase their throughput. Hi. Um, there is a lot Stand of... up so I could see you. <laughs> okay. Uh, there is a lot of uh, Emiratis female uh, business that going uh, recently. So what kind of recommendation that you uh, make just to let them reach their goals? For women business? For... Yeah, for the female business. Um, the entrepreneurship or the business part of the women here is great. They, um, if you've seen all around, uh, I think there are almost like 14 billion... Um, U.S. dollars worth of business or wealth in the hands of women here in the UAE. There are women business councils throughout the Emirates. There's also one at the higher level. Um, so that's one area where you can get involved, get connected. Uh, the other side is with the small medium enterprise. There are several organizations like SME in Dubai with Abdul Basit Janahi, as well as uh, uh, Rawad in Sharjah and uh, uh, Khalifa Fund uh, in Abu Dhabi. 
Um, a lot of these organizations, their job is to support young entrepreneurs, um, small uh, um, businesses that are, uh, that are rising. Interestingly, we have seen throughout all these uh, uh, setups, uh, almost 50% of the SMEs are women. So they're out there, they feel confident, they are uh, energized, and I think that's great. This is uh, um, quite healthy, and it's also very promising um, in, in the community in here. Right here, Sheikha Lubna. Ah. Uh, good morning, Sheikha Lubna. Good morning. It's great to have you here again. Uh, Salim Ede, I work for uh, Cisco in San Jose, and you mentioned San Jose, and actually it is a place uh, that has, as you know, is the cradle of entrepreneurship and has generated more wealth than in the history of mankind than any other place in the world. Yet, it is the place that saw most failures in the world. And it, these failures were really the fertilizers that uh, helped us grow stronger mm -hmm. every day. The question is, when will we have in this region the proper environment that encourages entrepreneurs and uh, the the appropriate laws that would allow constructive failure, if I can use this term, so that we grow stronger. I'm talking about the, you know, a lot of uh, uh, banks and uh, regulations should somehow be tweaked or changed to encourage real entrepreneurship. Well, if you see today, you'll find that the um, changes uh, regarding to regulation is not just happening here, it's happening everywhere, it's happening in the US as well. Um, it's a cycle of economy where you find uh, a certain environment had created failure, it keeps changing. Um, but I am, like Arif, a firm believer in this region. I, I actually believe that there's so much to offer and there's so much that will come out and has come out of this region. The fact that we are today, and you see the list of all the speakers here, these are highly successful entrepreneurs who made it. It wasn't today. They made it uh, five years ago, they started 10 years ago, but their commitment in here, the fact they are contributing and being here today to speak and to mentor um, a lot of young entrepreneurs in itself says quite a lot. The changes takes place worldwide. If you look at the changes that taken place, maybe even in the last seven years um, regarding regulations, um, we've seen cycles of um, uh, transparency issues in the U.S. and different places in the world. These things keep changing. Um, there is always a model that uh, creates a business or an environment. We only learn when these, something goes wrong with this and we correct it. So what's good about the changes itself today, it's actually a multilateral. It is in a consensus of um, world organizations together, and I think that's the right path to go forward. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum um, How did you become a successful woman? Um. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story about a friend of mine. I actually aced my classes when I was uh, throughout high school here, and I aced my classes when I was in the U.S. And one time, uh, I was sitting with a very close friend, Dr. Zainab, who's back in the U.S. now. And I told her, I said, I don't know why I have this feeling that people sometimes don't like me. They think I'm too competitive. I don't think I am competitive. And she said, are you kidding me? <laughs> Competitiveness starts with you. Competitiveness is not about looking at others, wanting to be better than they are. Competitiveness is about what you believe in yourself. If you make a better person out of yourself, it's because of you, it's not because of the others. And it's not on the expense of others. The quality of delivery is highly important to me. Um, when I was running to Jari.com, today also as a minister, um, I look at details. I would uh, have said this before, that's very true. And in Tijari, I actually drove everybody crazy because uh, it is a highly sensitive business. Online e-marketplace has a huge competition that could start any day. And it, when it starts, it moves very fast. I used to actually trace uh, any announcements, uh, information. And by the time I'd get through my email of, of my marketing department, I've already told them, you know, there is this, this particular portal that's out there. Or, so they always get um, very afraid that I would walk into their office and I said, did you know about this or did you know about that? Um, being ahead of the game is very critical. It is very important wherever you are. Creating a, a brand name for yourself. Brand name today, for me, is about integrity. It, it is about quality. It is about truthfulness. 
It is about who you are, what you deliver. It's about your passion. It's being compassionate to the community. I work hard, I travel a lot, but I support a lot of the different organization when it comes to businesses. I listen to um, uh, other people when they want to correct me, but I also listen to their problems if they need me. Um, being a part of the philanthropy is also quite critical. Um, very few people actually do that sometimes. And when you say, well, why didn't you do that? It's very important. Why well, I'm busy. We can't be busier than a minister who lives pretty much on an Airbus or a Boeing aircraft most of our time. So commit, deliver, be part of there, be responsible, feel what this, the community is all about. Don't be selfish about when you get to a point that you think this is all about you. It's not. Um, I don't believe in people who say I'm a self-made millionaire or a business person. There are people in your life who put you there. So uh, those people contribute to do in different aspects, whether supporting you emotionally, financially. Um, you have to be a contributor and you have to be helpful of others. Okay, when you mentioned um, uh, uh, Tajari.com and portals, you just handed me the baton because you have a beautiful pin right here. Um, a beautiful button which says wamdad.com and wamdad.com is the portal that uh, we're going to be launching at 12.30 today from this stage here. It's a portal that is aimed at inspiring, connecting and empowering entrepreneurship throughout the region. So I'd like to put you a little bit on the spot here um, for and ask you to do a 30 second ad pitch to all the community here in terms of getting onto WAMDA.com and registering, and why is it important to do that? Who can live today without getting up in the morning at some point in your day and not log on and check something on the internet? Who doesn't? No hands raised. All it means that connectivity is all about the internet. This is your pathway. This is not about you learning about technology. This is about you getting information. WAMDA is the best path for you today. It is the place where if you look at inspire, empower, and connect, connect is about WAMDA. But at the same time, connect is all about inspiring. So read, this morning I was coming, I had my iPad in my lap coming from Abu Dhabi. I logged on WAMDA. I was looking at all the Twitter messages, someone saying, 20 minutes, I should be there. So-and-so is going to come there. So connectivity. This is a platform that you have today. We didn't have this 10 years ago. So use it, don't abuse it, make sure that it helps you <laughs> and help others with it. I like that, use it, don't abuse it. Well done, well done, <laughs> fantastic. And I, I really want to say this was, Sheikha Lubna did not know I was gonna put her on the spot like that, For sure, I promise, I promise. He said, come unprepared. <laughs> no, you said you were coming unprepared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did that too. In between you the two airplanes. Up between, <laughs> I came in last night, true. <laughs> and you're leaving, in a few minutes. minutes. So I'm going to ask you a sort of an, a 30, 45 second wrap up in terms of, you know, answering this, which is as over the last eight weeks, as Arif mentioned, as we were preparing this conference, oops, this anti-conference, this unconference, un yeah. don't ever this call celebration. It. As the Swiss conference. would say, verboten. <laughs> well said. We have felt, and all of us have felt, and a lot of us have been coming and saying to each other, we've been hearing it, that there is excitement, there's a buzz in the mm -hmm. air. Um, what is defining right now? Is it real? Is it for real, this buzz? Are we at a watershed moment in this region in terms of a new momentum behind entrepreneurship? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it something that, that is for real, that we can feel? Today, this whole environment that's being conducted today, throughout today and tomorrow, it's not about creating something new. We all have that in our heart. We have that compassion. We have that energy. We have that fire. Today is really about streamlining all of our thoughts, putting our minds and souls together. It's all about reorganizing what we believe, reconfirming what we understand about entrepreneurship. Today is about learning from others, being inspired by others, connection. When you connect with people here, you'll go out when you have a wealth of information and contacts. People that you will be listening to, you'll be talking to. It's not all about stage. It's just part of us is going to be on stage. But look around you, introduce yourself. Look around, find out a person that you like and you are curious about their business. See what happened in their business. So I want to reiterate what Arif said right at the beginning. This is, this is an area of entrepreneurship, of a true entrepreneurship. It, it is about what we believe as merchants. 
Um, it's our job to inspire and to ignite this whole energy back again and make sure that we move forward. Sometimes there are setbacks in every society, but as we say, you fall forward. It, you learn from it, you push. You have, to have the, you have to have the will, you have to have the risk. If you don't have that as stamina, you will, you will fail yourself, not just the others. We are all so fortunate to have somebody like you, a real pioneer, a techie, gone back into government to create a more entrepreneurial government, and we still are looking for more, more entrepreneurship in government, to have carved out time in your schedule to come and celebrate with us here, Sheikh Alubna. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. I owe you and I owe out of this. We've talked about this. I was inspired by the idea. It was very important to me to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you for you being very with much. us.